Hi everyone, if you come from an Excel background, then you must be familiar with VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP concept in Excel. And if you are new to Power BI and you want to merge data from various tables, you may be thinking, how do we do VLOOKUP in Power BI? What type of DAX function do we need to use? You have come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can merge and combine data from various tables in Power BI, as well as how to ensure that the correct totals are being displayed after we merge the information. We will not do that by inserting additional column in the source data. This is bad practice. In Power BI, as much as possible, we want to keep the source data model intact and we want to avoid inserting any additional column. Instead, I will introduce you to better alternative by creating relationships and measures. In this video, I will show you examples of how to build relationship, how to use lookup value text to create new measures, and how to use some excellent values combo to create the correct total. In this video, I'll show you how to perform VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP in Power BI. We'll be using these three tables to illustrate our examples. We have table one, which is a date table where you have date and financial week. Table two, a shipment table where we have shipment number, country of origin, and number of packages. And table number three, which is invoices table. We've got date, invoice number, shipment number, cost type, and amount. Now, sometimes we want to merge data from these three tables into one table. For example, we may want to bring in financial week from this table into this table. How do we do that in Power BI? In Excel, we can just use VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. Likewise, sometimes you may want to show information from table two and bring that into table three. For example, we may want to show number of packages associated with each shipment and bring that into table three. How do we do that in Power BI? I'll show you in this video later on. Before we get started, let's look at our data model. There are three icons on the left. Let's click the first one, model view, and you can see we have three tables, date, shipment, and invoice. And then click the data view, and you can see the fields and the rows in each table. We are in the shipment table, and then click invoice, so that you can see how many fields we have in the invoice tables and how many rows, and then click date, and you can see the fields and the rows. Let's look at example one, how to bring in financial week from table one to table three. Can we simply type financial week and then click and drag? Uh oh, we got an error. Let's see the details and it says can't determine relationship between the fields. How do we fix that? Hmm. Let's go to model view and then Notice there is no relationship at the moment. So all we need to do is define the relationship. Look for common fields. For example, we have date table with date field and invoice table with date as well. So let's click the date and click and drag from date table to invoice table. And then one relationship is now created, one to many, which is great. And then let's link up the shipment table as well to the invoice table. So we've got shipment number, let's link it into shipment number in the invoice table. So now we've got relationships amongst our table. Once the relationship is defined, watch this, when we go into report view, voila, the error just disappeared. And that is the secret of Power BI. There is no need to type in VLOOKUP formula or XLOOKUP. You just simply have to click and drag. The key is to create a relationship. Once the relationship is created, it is a simple click and drag. For example, if I want country of origin, I can click and drag and put that in here and voila. Look at that. No VLOOKUP required, things just happen. Now let's look at example number two, how to bring in number of packages, which currently sits in table two into table three. You're right, just type in number of packages and then click and drag and put it there. And voila, all done. However, 
notice something that is not total. Mm, we've got a problem. How do we show total? Can we click this and show sum? Oops, that's all wrong. Wrong in each row, but correct in the total. If we select sum of number of packages, the row total is wrong, but we've got a total at the bottom. If we don't select sum and say don't summarize, then we have the correct total in each row, but no total over there. How to show the correct total of number of packages in table three? To do that, we need to first create a new measure called packages hash using lookup value dex. And then we need to create a new measure called packages has has using sum x and values dex. So it is a little bit complicated, but it is worth investing the time to understand these three dex functions because they are all very useful and will be coming handy in your future Power BI journey. So be patient with me. We are going to step things through one by one. Let's create a new measure using lookup value. Lookup value DAX has three compulsory inputs. The first one being the result column, followed by the search column, followed by the search value. And then the rest are optional inputs. If you want to, you can search for more than one criteria. We're not going to use that today. Today, we'll just be using one search criteria. Let's put our learning into practice. Click new measure. And then let's create our new measure using lookup value. It's called packages dash. And that is our result column. That is our search column. And that is our search value. Now let's test the output of our DEX formula. Look at that. We're getting 2 and 10, which is correct. However, the total is still 2. Why is that? Because if you look at the DEX, this total packages is looking up the minimum of invoice shipment number, which means that at the total level, there will be lots of invoice shipment number and it's taking the smallest one, which is S1. And that's why we are getting two. If I'm changing that into max, then that will become 10. Can you see that? Yeah. So let's just keep it at minimum for now. We will be fixing this using some X and values. And I will show you how to do that in the next section. Next, we're going to fix the total using some X. How to do that? Let's create a new measure. And we're going to call it packages dash dash some X open bracket values shipment shipment number comma packages dash. By doing this, we're going to force the correct total to be calculated. So let's just test that first. And then let's click and drag. And watch that. It is now giving us the correct total because in January, we have two shipments, shipment one and two. Shipment one is two packages. Shipment two is 10 packages. And the total is showing 12. Some of you may be thinking, how does this DAX work? How does it fix things? What is some X and what is values DAX? What does it mean? Let's digest this formula. Some X is an iterator. Some X has an input, which is a table name as well as the calculation. What does iterator mean? Iterator means the function is asking Power BI to calculate row by row. So it's going to look at this table and then row by row, it will calculate the number of packages that is associated with each row of the table. Now, remember, this is a measure that we have just written earlier using the lookup value. So this is going to give us the number of packages associated with each shipment. And then in here, we are going to do that offer each row of the values table over here. If you cannot visualize what the table look like, there is a quick and easy step. You can copy this and then you can go to table tools and then create new table and then just paste it there. And we're going to call this interim table. 
so that you can visualize what does value sh shipment number give us. Now, once you have done that, click tick, you can see that interim show up over there. And to see what's inside, go to data view and you can see for interim table, there are two rows, S1 and S2, because the values function give us the unique items in a given column. So in this instance, in shipment number, we have two unique shipment number, S1 and S2, which is why our table output has two rows, S1 and S2. And then for each row, it will then look up the number of packages and then sum them all up to show the correct total. And that's how you use some X and values combination to force additivity, to make sure that the total of your columns is giving you the correct answer. Congratulations! You have now reached the end of this video and have learned how to merge data from various tables into one visual, whilst ensuring that the correct total is being displayed. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future videos. See you next time.